and welcome to American Stories. I'm Saida Pagan. Today we are in conversation with Lisey Harrison, a best-selling author who is about to release another book in one of her many series of books, The Graveyard Girls. Welcome to our program. Hi, Saida. Thank you for having me. Tell us about this new book series. Um, the Graveyard Girls, this, well, what I'm about to release October 3rd is the second installment, screen okay. for the camera, but the first one, Graveyard Girls, um, is a joint effort between myself and horror author Dan Krause, Daniel Krause, um, and we sort of combined our skills to create something that we thought was needed in the market, which is just horror for girls fun horror for girls. And so it combines, I mean, Dan is a number one New York Times bestselling author of horror. Um, so he's bringing that to the table. And I brought my, you know, love of clicks and friendships and exploring friendship dynamics. And we've combined that. So we created a series about these girls who have a secret club called Graveyard Girls, where they get together and tell each other horror stories. And oftentimes these stories reflect what they're going through, the sort of the horrors of middle school, their real life horrors, and they process it all through these horror stories and that they tell in secret. So we've created that a series about that. What are some of the things that girls do go through in, at that age? Oh my God. What don't I mean, they, right? <laughs> everything. And it's it's sadly not that different from what we go through as adults, they're just going through it for the first time and it's bigger and louder and they don't have the tools to, to deal with it. A lot of it is friend drama. Um, I didn't get invited to the sleepover. Everyone else did. It's, I don't know who I am. I'm finding my identity for the first time. I'm sort of being left to fly on my own. My parents aren't arranging my social calendar anymore. And so how do I even know who I am or how I fit in? It's, I don't really resonate with the people that I grew up with. Am, am I bad? Are they bad? It's just questioning everything about yourself. It's crushes, it's identity. It's all the things all at once with sort of no, no skills to, to handle it. And so it's just, it's craziness. Lisa, you are so good at this sort of thing. How did you develop this, uh, this ability to write to some of these issues? I think it's a self-awareness more than anything. It's a curiosity and an interest in why are we like this? It's it's so closely linked to psychology and a fascination with humanity that it's really just, why are we going through this? Why are we like this? It's me overthinking everything in my own life and questioning everything about everything I do and everything I am or everything I'm not and really just wanting to process it. And this is how... I process it. I do it on other characters' time. <laughs> you know, I've, I play God in other people's worlds so I can figure out my own world. And I'm still processing it. I've written almost 42 novels, pretty much all about friendship um, dynamics and friendship struggles. And so I'm still figuring it out. It sort of never changes. It just evolves. That That's amazing, Lisi. You know, I guess people who read the clip way back in the day, what was that, about 2007 or so? It's I, 2003, 2002. Okay. Yeah. And they they probably are like, you know, older now, but still, they, they'd probably be fans of this, I would think. They're still fans of the click, which is amazing to me. I still get a lot of correspondence from click fans wanting a click series now that those characters are adults the same age as them and I am developing that so we'll put that over there and hopefully I will be able to release that sometime soon but so much has changed culturally and personally since the click came out that the characters that all live on this shelf behind me have evolved with the times and with myself. So the click characters in 2003 are nothing like the characters in these books. Um, because I have perspective, I have grown culturally, the things that we accept and say to each other have changed mostly for the better. Um, and so 
it's affected my writing. So they're sort of time capsules in a way of how we've all evolved over the years. I want to talk a little bit more about Graveyard Girls, but before we do that, let's remind our viewers of the other series. There have been five series, correct? Tell us there, about those. There's been The Click. There's been Alphas, which was a spinoff of The Click. There was, let's see here, I did Monster High and then um, Girl Stuff, The Pack. So yeah, and Graveyard Girls. All of them with multiple um, female protagonists, friend groups, friend dynamics. I am obsessed with it for some reason. Still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Lisi, let's go back to the Graveyard Girls and tell us, you always have a message. You have some messages in your work. So tell us what is the message or messages in Graveyard Girls? Graveyard Girls is less of a a direct message and more of a commentary just on the horrors of middle school and the way that we try to process things and how we can come together and connect with each other. And that in a way is very therapeutic and everybody has their different things. Some kids at that age, it's sports and their sports team. Others, it, they're always sort of finding a group that they can cluster together with and feel validated and feel like they belong. So this is more of just an opportunity for, for readers to say, hey, maybe we should try something like this and create this little insular world where we feel safe and connected and we belong to each other in our own freaky little ways. Um, I've always just been a fan. In every one of my books, there's always some characters that are just so wildly left of center. I think I've always felt inside left of center but outside project center. So I've always lived this sort of double life. And I like creating little safe spaces for my characters. And especially in Graveyard Girls, we thought it was really important that these girls have these rituals in this place where they can explore these dark feelings and curiosities and not feel judged. Yes, that's so important. Uh, now there are two books out where there's one book out and then pretty soon in just about a week. October 3rd. The, yep. Tell us the titles of the two books, please. So the first one is Graveyard Girls, one, two, three, four, I Declare a Thumb War. <laughs> and the second is Scream for the Camera. And what's cool is you'll see that, see the gray line down the middle. This is where the horror story that the girls tell each other actually exists. So the reader knows like they're getting closer and closer and closer to the actual horror story. I mean, the whole, see, so it's in this one too. So you know when it's coming. It's like the Jaws music get approaching. So you know when it's coming. And what I love about this, the, there is horror in the whole series. It's sort of steeped in this very, it's set in a town called Misery Falls, Oregon. And there is a lot of lore surrounding a murderer named Silas Hoke, who was electrocuted for murdering. He was a PE teacher and he murdered a girl in the private school that he worked at because she kept making fun of him for having a prosthetic leg. And so he killed her and the, he was electrocuted for it. And the town in a sort of savage, dark way celebrates his electrocution every year with something called Hope Week. And so the actual world that these girls live in is already steeped in horror and mystery and creepiness. And the book starts with each, each um, there's a point of view of each character and they alternate throughout the book. And it starts with Silas Hope's point of view. And so is he alive? Is he not alive? There's a lot of questioning whether the things that are happening in this series are they real? Are they not real? So it's just very exhilarating. Oh, it sounds amazing. Wish you the best of luck with all of this. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to read these new books or the new book that's coming out. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Or you've, you've, oh, I'd you've love to tell you a lot of things, but I don't think you have the time. But right, uh, right. <laughs> there's a but lot I have to say. I, I bet. Well, thank you so much again for joining thank us. Thank you. For this edition. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it.
Yes, and thank you for joining us for this edition of American Stories. I'm Saida Pagan.